Welcome, everybody, to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast, episode number 187. And coming up on this one, the Leafs smoke the Sharks 4-1 to finish their California A road trip with a perfect 3-0, get all six points. Is the Nylander contract all but done? That's what everyone's saying. And we'll tee up the week ahead for the Leafs. All this and more coming up on episode 187 of the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. Reach Dog, our old buddy Mike Ricci was in the house on Saturday night when the Leafs were playing the San Jose Sharks, his hair looking as glorious as ever. Now, I am not even sure if he still works for the Sharks, but it doesn't matter. He was there anyway, and we're going to tell you a little story, a little trip down memory lane about Mike Ricci's old duct tape flip-flops. <laughs> Chad, I'm sure you can't wait for that. Here we go, folks. Let's get right into it. Let's hit the intro. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Dale. Don't forget to follow us on social media at the Tip In Maple Leafs podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Tip In podcast on TikTok and Tip In pod on Twitter. And you can email us Tip In podcast at gmail.com. How's it going? Yeah, not bad, man. You? Uh, it's, it's all right. It's we all were, right. We it's were the end gonna... Christmas break. Oh yeah, the kids are going back to school tomorrow, right? Yeah, everything's like getting it's it's a shitty time of the year, right? We're recording this on Sunday evening. We were going to record it right after the game last night, but I was in no man's land. Passed right the fuck out halfway through the game. It was a bit of a snooze fest, not going to yeah. lie. So, uh it was I, a boring game. Com I completely pulled the shoot accidentally last night just <laughs> you should clarify that you weren't you weren't drunk or no oh or no 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 was, i was you just said you you passed out it just, wasn't like he had been drinking all day and he passed no out. no no i was just bored to death by watching that game because it was there was nothing cooking i was just oh. like what the fuck i think the sharks had lost like 11 straight or something like that and i'm just yeah. i just wasn't feeling it i'm just like okay well i i think the least are going to pull this one out i'm not sure but i felt confident that they were and i'm just like i don't know a bit of a snooze fest so i made the mistake of taking a little lay down on the couch there about the end towards the end of the first period. And that was all she wrote for me. Didn't even catch it. Had to go back today and watch the highlights and get uh, to see exactly what happened. So I was glad to see that they beat the Sharks 4-1 to wrap up the California road trip. A perfect 3-0. and Very successful, I would say. Get back in the winning yep. books. Feeling good. But let's be serious here. Beating the Kings. Obviously, the Kings are a good team. But then the Ducks and the Sharks, like... You know, those are scary games when it comes to the Leafs, right, Chad? Because you never know how those puppies are going to go. Was it not great to see them, like, go in and win all three of those games? But, you know, particularly, yes. in particular, the game against the Ducks and the game against the Kings. Like, or sorry, and the game against the Sharks to, to come back home here. See, like, you never know how those puppies are going to go, right? No, not with the Toronto Maple Leafs. When you're playing no. a team in the bottom of the standings, that's where it gets dicey with these boys. Oh, so it was man. really good to see. And I was kind of worried about the San Jose game because after they beat L.A. and Anaheim back-to-back, -back, they had two days where I'm sure Sheldon Keefe said, boys, oh. good wins, a couple days off in California. Oh, no. No. So you never know how that's going to go when Saturday <laughs> oh, yeah. night rolls around. Hit the beach, boys. Game over. Oh, yeah. You imagine, like, yeah. Yeah, like, no. hit the beach, golf course. Like, the weather's great. The women are great. You do what you got to do down in California. And as so far I was a little worried, but they, they oh, took yeah. care of business against San Jose. And as far as I know, can't confirm or deny this, but I'm pretty sure post-game they were saying that uh, they were going to be spending Saturday night in California and not returning home until oh, sometime, right? sometime Sunday. So rumor has it that Mike Ricci was going to be taking the boys out for a hell of a night on the town. Speaking of Mike Ricci, Chad, yeah. would you like to tell that story just right off the top for Did anybody who doesn't know? Did you see him in the broadcast last night? Well, I fell asleep, so I'm going to be honest. No, I didn't, but I imagine that he was lurking around somewhere. Did no, you they, sh they showed him, okay, I and I was like, oh, 
I was waiting for your text. Did not know you were asleep. Yeah. But they showed Patrick Marlowe because he now works for the Sharks and yep. and he used to be a Leaf and they were doing a thing on him with Matthews and Marner. And who is sitting beside Patrick Marlowe oh, talking no his ear off? Mike Ricci. Oh, no way, man. Yeah, That's, Mike Ricci. Okay. I guess he's a scout and a development coach. I thought he was. I for San Jose. Was. So he's sitting there. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I was imagining this, but I'm pretty sure he had one leg up on the bar and he oh. was leaning back like this. <laughs> and his hair was slicked sure. back. Of course. Pound and Bud Lights. No problem. Something like that. And oh, anyway, yeah. yeah, they showed him. And I was sitting there. I'm like, oh, Dale's going to text any minute. Dale's going to be like, did you see? Our buddy was just on TV. But I nothing. would have. I Crickets. would have. I would have. Do you so want yeah, to tell the should. story when we were, how old would we have been at that time? 16, oh, maybe? Oh, young. I think younger 14? than that. Yeah. High, high, elementary school or high school? Maybe did elementary he, school. He no, play, did he play for the did he play for the Peterborough Peets at that time? Oh God, no! He was in the NA, I think he played for uh, Quebec, or no, he might have played for the Flyers at that time. Oh, so was that late in his career? Okay, so no. then maybe we no, were... he played for the Islers. He, he played for the Flyers first, uh, Quebec, and then Philly. I think at, uh, Philly at the end, right? No, I don't think so. I think it was Philly at the first, and then he got traded to Quebec, which ultimately went to Colorado. I think it was he went. I think did he not? Was he not part of the? No, was I he part of the Lindros trade? He might have been. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I don't think he was. Four he was in the NHL four. at the time that this story takes place. Yeah, for but, sure. Uh, you, I, uh, I think you, you should just tell it down at down at Lakeview, uh, whatever Del Quarry Park. No, no, not Del Quarry Park. They had a softball tournament oh. at Lakeview. Uh, what's it called? Lake, oh. is it East East City East, Bowl, East, East City, City Bowl, Bowl yes. in Peterborough. City. Anybody who knows, anybody who knows, yeah. Chad, take it, take, take I, it from there. Well, I tell you, I'm kind of my memory's kind of foggy on it, so you might have to help me out here. <laughs> okay, it was like a celebrity. Like, I remember being at the game, and it was it was like game. a it was a lot of like uh, old NHL players, some kind of like so, yeah. radio personalities oh, and yeah, things like yeah. that, and some current ones too. Like I think there might have been I can't remember who else was there. there Peter Zezel was there. Yeah, there were some former lease for sure. And then yeah. just some guys like Domi might have been there, Ricci, like just some guys that played for the Pete stuff like that. Yeah, some and all Peter Pete's. But Ricci was just, he did not show up prepared to play baseball. No, in not any at all. Way. Like nothing, nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, he showed go up. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> he, he showed up and he was wearing flip flops. Oh, not just any flip flops. Flip flops with duct tape on them, holding them together. This guy's making millions of dollars in the NHL, and he shows up in a pair of flip flops. He the played game. the he, games yeah, in flip flops. What a lot of guys showed up with bags, and they would take oh. out their cleats. And some of them had like some chin pads or elbow pads and stuff like that that they were wearing. He basically got out of his truck, cooler full of beer, <laughs> cooler full of beer, a baseball glove, flip flops, and went straight to the field. Yeah. Like he yeah. didn't put anything on, no warm ups, no nothing. Scampy little shorts. Like you would have, like Mitch Buchanan. Shorts, oh, like shorts. Mi oh, Mitch Buchanan's all over this puppy. Like you could see everything in these puppies, man. There was nothing left for the imagination for Reach Dog. Yeah. And he did not care. Okay. He's like, but yeah, go ahead. But no, I'm just saying now it's all. I Parts of that game are coming back to me now, now that you're but, refreshing my like, memory on it. There was a bar there where, like, I don't think we could drink at that time, but I we, no, we were like sneak. 14, 15. Yeah, well, that never really stopped us anyway. No, so, I know. like, we, we might have been popping a few anyway, but Reach Dog ends up, well, there, there's a break in the action. <laughs> Reach Dog ends up up in the bar area, up in the bar area. And we're like, man, Richie's right over there. Like, we got to go say something to him or like something. Like, we didn't have cell phones back in the day. Like, we couldn't get pics and stuff no. like that, right? So we brought markers, though, for autographs. Or I yeah. brought a marker for yeah, autographs. Okay. I remember that. Because I, I still have a shirt with a bunch of signatures on it from that, from that game. But we ended up being like, do you seriously? That's yeah. incredible. So yeah. we, we, I had a Doug Gilmore jersey. He wasn't there, though. No, Dougie, Dougie wasn't, wasn't there. there, but I got no. them all. That's all I had on me. So I but, got them all signed the Dougie. Dude, Wood. we were like, you know, 14-year-old kids, whatever. And we're like, Breachy. Like, <laughs> those are incredible. We just started, we just started laying in. Like, this guy's a professional hockey player making millions of dollars. We're 14-year-old little fucking punks. And we're just like making fun of his 
fucking sandals, making fun of his flip flops left and right. We're like, reach, reaching. Those are absolutely beautiful flip flops. And he's like, oh, what these old things? He's like, do you like these puppies? He's like, these are my reach dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> these are my reach dogs. Oh. And to reach this dogs. to this day, we call all flip flops. Reach dogs. Reach dogs. Especially like the ones that you've been wearing a little too long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the ones that you just can't throw out. Yeah. I had a pair of reach dogs that I just got rid of last year that they were like, they had holes in the bottom. Yeah. So yeah. rocks would like cut my feet as oh, I was yeah. walking. Yeah. Yeah. They were ripped. So they just fall off sometimes. And I was like, I'm not getting rid of my reach dogs. No, I no, love them. no. So anyway, there's a little Mike Ricci story for you uh, guys. We've told time. that before, but it's just always a blast. When I they play totally the Sharks. <laughs> Tune in on Tuesday night when they play the Sharks again, and we'll probably tell that same story. <laughs> just, there you it's, go. Because it's just so damn good, man. It's just so damn good. But anyway, yeah. great to see Reach Dog, and I'm sure he had the Reach, <laughs> the Reach Dogs somewhere in the vicinity last night, guaranteed. I wonder what his wife like thinks <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy there. I don't know if you remember this, but there was a guy who took a fall round in third base. <laughs> I forget. I forget who it was, but he was a, he wasn't an athlete. I think he was like a radio or TV guy. Like they had like the people who work for Peterborough radio stations. Yeah, and stuff. I think it might have been. It might have been Jay Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't Jay Sharp. Brian Ennis. Like, Brian. No, 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 it was like a big guy. But at the time, like he probably retired close to that time like he was old at that time and you know when you're a great big guy and you haven't moved in a long time well he yeah. was really trying to give it and he came around third base yeah. and he face planted halfway between yeah. third and home oh yeah that was the best day. and he just for the rest of the day just got made fun of all day by his teammates was who awesome. was that who was there to pick him up reach dog no he <laughs> wasn't reach he could not give he was at the shits. bar yeah reach he was up at the bar being like oh bud what are you doing we but, saw uh, Richie again at Del Curry Park for a concert. Maybe it was just me, but I saw him again. And again, he was wearing duct tape flip flops. <laughs> I think you might have been solo on that one, but I yeah. went. See, you should have grabbed a pick then. No, I again, I was like a teenager. Oh, okay. I wouldn't okay. walk around with a camera. Okay. Okay. Four cell phones. But anyway, <laughs> let's get into the game. Yeah, man. So, so look. The Leafs played an exhibition game on Saturday night yeah, against the San Jose Sharks. Basically, we got another one coming on Tuesday here, but we'll see what happens. Uh, wow, anyway, they are bad. Yeah, the Sharks are, are not good. Nylander scores twice. Marner scores. Yarncroft got the other goal. Leafs win at 4-1. Um, I guess we'll start with uh, – oh, sorry. What's that now, Chad? I'm sorry. Oh, oh my God. Apparently, the contract is all but done for William Nylander. It could uh -oh. be – as early as when they get home tomorrow or Tuesday before the game. But oh, I'm sorry, what is that? Oh, geez. We are just getting word now that Nylander's agent is on the telephone with Tree Living, I think, or something is cooking behind the scenes chat. I think we better go to that immediately. Contract negotiations live on the Tip in Maple Leafs podcast. We better get to that. Right we better now. get to that. Let's plug the feed in right now. Here it is. Show me the money. Show you the money. Oh, no, no, you can do better than that, Jerry. I want you to say it what you would mean it, brother. Hey, I got Bob Sugar on the other line. I better hear you say it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Show you the money. Not, not show you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. Louder. Show me the money. That's it, brother, but you got to yell. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. It's basically what's going to happen. So the reports are indicating that William Nylander is going to sign a massive contract this week. Elliot Friedman said it on the broadcast last night that it could happen as early as tomorrow, Monday. We're recording this on Sunday, that it could happen on Monday, and he's looking it's in the ballpark of 11.5 for eight years. 11.5, is that something or what, man? Like, can you, like, you imagine if they could have got him for 10 in the summer? Well, they had, they could have. I don't think Nylander would have taken it. Do you? You think he think was going to bet on himself no matter what? 
hundred percent. Look at this guy. <laughs> like it, I remember listening to, I remember listening to the hockey, like this hockey podcast and it, it was a big round table of guys and they were debating Nylander and there were guys, this master, was, master debating, master debating on it. There were guys on that. And this is like August or September before the season started. There were guys on that saying he's a re- sorry, sorry, a round table of master debate. <laughs> they were saying seven. Like guys were like, he's oh. seven, seven and a half. <laughs> there were guys That's like what he's making now. I know there's guys like eight. I wouldn't go higher than eight and a half, nine million dollars. And to think just a few months later, he's gonna sign for eleven point five. It is crazy, dude. It is absolutely wild. The season that this guy has been having it's absolutely crazy he scored his 20th goal last night he's on pace for 40 plus he's fuck yep. he's gonna blow past what he he's gonna blow past the 40 goal uh season that he had last year i i don't think there's any oh. doubt about it the oh. leafs could have 250 goal scores for the first time and in... what if this is his peak though well does it like, look like, does it look that way to you no, it doesn't to me but that's the one thing me. that worries me is you're going to pay him on this season and last season. And then and what, he's, gonna, he's just going to disappear. No, but he's going to go down to it. being like a 60 to 70 point guy. That's making 11 and a half million dollars. It, it doesn't look that way to me. It looks to me like what you think that just once he gets the money, he's going to be like, okay, good. No, enough. no, no, no. I don't think that I think like there's always he's, a, there's always an outlier of a season or two, right? Where guys have, big seasons but that's not I, I really their career numbers I so maybe you. he has like a 100 point season he scores 50 goals and then he reverts back to 70 75 points it's possible but to me it looks like he specifically him out of all the main guys each season like austin dipped a bit and whatever mitch is yeah. not having a great season and whatever. there's injuries and things that are going to happen there's of course close to but it. like it looks to me like consistently Nylander has progressed every season every single season i haven't seen a yeah. dip there have you nope. he's just gotten better every season so i don't i don't think who knows can't predict the future here but to me it doesn't seem like he's gonna regress it, it just doesn't seem that way like i think it's sky's the limit for this guy he's one of the best players in the fucking league and he is without a doubt in my mind the second best player on this hockey team okay you don't think so yeah no i i think this season he is that's my i'm just saying that's my worry my worry is i I think he was last year too i think he's i think he has and in the playoffs in the playoffs he was yeah probably their best forward in the playoffs morgan riley was the best player on the team in the playoffs last year he he does Nylander was the best for he does things uh, on this team that a lot of forwards don't do no but he has had times where and, you're like, and what the hell is it what the hell are you doing out there but, Willie? but but not lately when's the last time no. we, we've talked about that it's been it's been a, it's been a long time yeah like, and now he's killing penalties and stuff too and like legitimately killing penalties not just playing the last like 30 seconds 20 seconds like he's legitimately coming out and killing a minute of of penalty kills now that's just my worry. That's I my worry is you're going to pay him 11 and a half and, and he's going to even out to be an 80 point guy max. What's the alternative? They don't do it. He, yeah. some, someone else does. And then he just fucking flourishes for the, he becomes as good as passer act for the next five years in a row. No, no, but what like, if, what if you just, what if you let him go to free agency? He's gone. What if, what if he goes and there's nothing out there for him? That's ridiculous, Chad. That's ridiculous. what if what if no one else has got like oh, a lot on, of teams dude. are tight against the cap too. What if no, no one else has got eleven and a half? Some someone look at what he's bringing to the table. Someone finds it for that guy. Come okay. on, come on. Yeah, you know I I I agree, but like it doesn't always. Happen. It, it's not every day. Like we're not talking like you know. It's not every day that a guy like that like he's when's when's the last time a guy walked to free agency. And got well, a huge payday. Goudreau? Did he get a and, huge payday? Well, he kind of fucked himself a little bit. Like he ended up getting nine something, I guess. But who would you who would you rather have? Goudreau or Nylander? To me, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Like I'm it's, just, it's not even close right now. If I had to pick between I'm just Goudreau playing a devil's Nylander, advocate for the no, pod, no, I, like I, for I the podcast you. to, you know. I hear you. Like I just think you let him test it. 
you don't want to let them test it because then you're just running into the look. Do, do I love the 11 and a half million if that's what it ends up being? No, of course not. How could you on a team as no. cap strapped as these guys? No, I don't love the price tag. I like the term. Finally, a guy yes. will take the he'll be the first forward to take the fucking max deal. I appreciate that. But no, of course, you know, I'd rather it be 10. But I'd rather keep him. Like if it is going to cost what it's going to cost, I would I would rather have him than have him see him playing and fucking for the Florida Panthers or something crazy next season or you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just I don't know. Like or he goes out to wherever. I think he'd go I know, wherever. But we were talking it, we were talking last podcast, man. We were talking about not falling in love with the players and how other teams have walked away from great talent. They've traded away great talent because of the fact that they're like, we're not going to pay you that money. And you said it. You're like, life goes on. You you use the Vancouver Canucks as an example. It's true. They got better. Why is it in Toronto we have to pay them? But like maybe we cannot. We cannot let them walk. We cannot well, trade them. We have. No, I to hear pay you. Them. I hear you. But we're talking. Okay, but like guys like this, like they just don't come around. Like you kind of like. Would you rather not have? But them, when you say you- that, when you say that about Bo Horvat. In Vancouver, you might have like I'm sure there's a Vancouver podcast where like you gotta keep this guy, you gotta give him what they want. I'm sure. Walk and away from him. Look, you you might first, think I'm you might think like I'm crazy first, here. One of the best teams in the West. You might think I'm crazy here, and and people watching or listening might think I'm crazy. Like for me, if it was if again, I made the Gujarat out of Nylander comparison. If I had to choose between Bo Horvat or William Nylander, it's not even close. It's 88 all fucking day long. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a homer. Like I am, obviously, but a bit of you is saying that because no, you're home. No, it's honestly true. I like Bull Horvat as a player. I like Goudreau too. But if I had to pick between those three guys, like it just doing it single like comparisons, like one on one, it's Nylander. Look at what he's doing. Okay. Look at him. So who's this guy he? is a fucking he's out of this, he's on another planet who, right now. Who's his comparables? I think it's Pasternak. Or and, I think he's getting close to Pasternak. Do you not think? Well, I don't think he's as good as Pasternak. Every night, every night Pasternak is killing it. Every night, Nylander is killing it. He, I think, I would, I think Pasternak. Okay, would I take Pasternak over Nylander? Yes, I would. So there you go. Yeah, but I think I don't think Willie's far off. I don't think he's that far off. Maybe I'm crazy. Am I crazy? Like, do you think it's there's that big a gap between Pasternak and Nylander? I don't think there's a huge gap, but I do think there's a gap between sure. William Nylander and David Pasternak. Well, guess what? There's going to be a bit of a gap price-wise, too, because it looks like Willie might be making more money here yeah, in a that's couple the, days. So. That's the thing I'm talking about. Is like, why do you always have to pay them? Why do you always have to give them the money? I know, but I understand it. Like, I understand it. Like, it would be nice if, if Willie would just be like, all right, boys, I want to be here just... 10 million bucks. Let's go. Like or, or, 80, or 80 million bucks. Eight on, years. Take on the it, flip side, if they're not going to do that to have a management team that says, we're not going to do it. Like, go ahead. Knock on the doors on July 1. This is our offer. If you come back and see us, if you can't find anything better. Risky, though. Risky. It's risky, but sometimes, I don't know. It just feels like they haven't won anything. They haven't done anything. I know. I know. The guys, I, guys I perform, it. and we just... Like you said it last podcast, there's going to be 11 guys making over 10 million next year. Four of them are going to be on the Toronto Maple Leafs. No, I know. Like, I, crazy. I, I hear everything you're saying um, about it. And and I do, like, I do. I don't, I wish the money wasn't what it was, but it looks I like know. it is going to be what it is. So I'd rather have them around and keep swinging at it. And hopefully one day they, they just knock the fucking wall down and they break through and away they go. But as hopefully. soon as this, soon as this happens because it looks like it's happening it could happen tomorrow like tuesday who knows uh maybe not like it, i've been hearing rumblings that the dad's involved no surprise there michael nylander obviously yeah, I heard he wants to get his two cents in there like nothing can, like his sons can't just make their own decisions like pops has got to get in there and fucking get his hands over all over it right I, like, yeah and i think when parents get involved it's, it's silly because you're always going to think your kid is the best it's it, it was the same when Mitch was going through his and and there was word that his dad was kind of really involved in the negotiation or whatever and it's like well of course his dad's going to think he's just as good as Austin Matthews do you think he's yeah. that's how parents are they shouldn't have anything to do with it it should be the agent the player and the management and that's it of course of but, course okay anyway we we'll move on I want to I, I, I want to talk about Jones um, yeah. and the goaltending uh, quickly and a little bit about the standings and we'll get out of here but hey man three wins in a row. 
heading home. Things are looking, the team is playing a lot better. We're finally getting some goaltending, like two goals allowed total on this trip. Do you think it's a little time for a little celebration from Belfour Spirits? I would love it. Let's hear it, Belfour Spirits. In honor of Joe. Hi, Ed Belfour here, Belfour Spirits. Making some of the best whiskey in the world. Uh, we've been at this for uh, five years, going on six years. And this is family operated. We go to work every day. We work on every aspect of this business. We take great pride, you know, at watching people drink our whiskey and, and that big smile on their face. You know, like, wow, this is really, really good. That's what's so awesome is when you see those people loving your whiskey. And it's like when I play the game and at the end of the game, you know, they're chanting my name. We just want to make really great tasting whiskey. And that's, that's our goal. And, you know, as it ages, it's only going to get better. We're very proud of that. Buy a bottle and I'll sign it for you. Buy two, I'll help you drink the second one. Have a great day. Our boy. Uh, uh, Belfort Spirits, you can go to belfortspirits.com for more information. And he is serious. Like, that's not a joke. He will help you drink the second one. He will not only help you, he will just polish it off all <laughs> on his own. <laughs> You'll pay for it. He'll, He'll drink, drink it. it. <laughs> that's exactly. That should be their new slogan. You buy it, I'll drink Logo? <laughs> Oh, okay. Anyway. Good time. Uh, um, yeah, Martin Jones, man. Two slogan. goals. What did I say? Slogo? Slogan. You said slogo. Slogo. I like that though. Slogo. That should be good. Um, oh, that's what Belfort calls it after he's dipped into a few bottles yeah. of the old Belfort spirit. Have you seen I got the... a slogo for you, boys. <laughs> hey, you see my the slogo on my bottle? It's a pair oh. of wings. Oh man. All right, um, go ahead. Yeah, no, the goaltending. This is what we talked about this a few podcasts ago when Samsonov got sent down. Like you needed to get adequate goaltending, and Jones is actually giving you more than that right oh. now. Dude, he's he's the starting goaltender. Yep. Martin Jones is the starting goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's no doubt about it. I think he'll be will get a few games here, but here's where I'm at with this, Chad. Like I just said before, we heard from Eddie Belfour and Belfour Spirits. He only Joe, the Leafs give up two goals on this trip. Shout out to the defense. I'm not gonna go mental on the Leafs defense here, but I think they have looked better as of late. But does a lot of that have to do with no, all of a sudden now they've got a guy in net that can make some fucking saves? Like yeah. he's finally they're getting like when they if if the Leafs have goaltending that is like letting in one goal a game, they're going to win a lot of fucking hockey games. Yeah. When you got a guy back there like Samsonov who's letting in four or five, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's hard to fucking win. So here's where I'm at before I send it to you on the goaltending. Jones is the starter. Wall, when ready, is the backup. Until proven otherwise, that's where I'm at. Jones is the starter. Wall is the backup right now. And Samsonov is done. <laughs> that's where I'm at with the goaltending. What about you? Uh, yeah, kind of. I, I I wouldn't anoint Martin Jones the starter. I think he's going to get you through this patch or whatever. But here's my thing on it. Samsonov, I, I agree with you. I think he's done for this year. Maybe he'll bounce back somewhere. I don't know, but forget about that. Martin Jones... And Joseph Wall, okay. I'm I'm not sold on it going. I don't hate. Playoffs. I don't, I don't it. hate it, but I'm not sold on it. But I will say this: probably the best signing in the off season. Oh God, is Martin Jones. Oh my God! Of everybody you brought in, that one little signing with that little hundred thousand dollar thing after the waiver wire, whatever it was, to keep him on the roster, that was the best move in the offseason. Hildeby, that is saving Hildeby, us right now. Hildeby would be playing every night right I now. I know. It wasn't so. Yeah, Jones incredible. So yeah, and what for me, Jones has looked so well and so confident, and he's just fit in like a so smooth. Yeah. To me, just. The confidence back there, this team needs that. I hope Wall, when he comes back, picks up where he left off. But if he doesn't, at least we got a guy here who in Jones who can stop the fucking puck so and help Wall out. Like, so it's not all on Wall Agreed. like it was to begin the season. So yeah. um, anyway, man, a lot of good things there. So yeah, if Wall comes back and regains his form, like I have no problem, like, you know, 
going with Wall in the playoffs, whatever. But if he falters, I definitely feel more comfortable with a guy like Jones being there yes. than Samsonov. Like Samsonov, I'm sorry. I think like we potentially have seen the end of Samsonov in a least jersey here. I don't see yeah. in any well, I don't see any I don't see any scenario how when you've got Wall and Jones healthy, I see no scenario where you can get Samson off back in the net. No, he hasn't even reported to the Marlies yet. Like, he hasn't even touched the ice in the AHL. So, he's got a long road back. He would have to really play well down there to get called back up and get his chance. But, barring injury, because that can happen. I mean, if Jones gets hurt, you're big, and, and big he'll to be he'll to be not trouble. ready for the NHL. You've got to go back to Samson off. So anything, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, man. I don't want, anyway. I don't want to see that. But anyway, uh, no. and the last thing on um Martin Jones is is the fact you said it about he can actually stop pucks and do something. That's what you get when you sign a guy who's played in the NHL. Oh, no shit, right? It, it, it was a good signing to have someone like that in the organization because now in the NHL, it seems like every team hits up three, four, five goalies a season. Like the uh, old, the old playing, you know, Martin Brodeur playing seventy-two games is long gone. Guys don't do that anymore with no, injuries. I'm, ve- I'm very surprised that there wasn't another team out there. Jones is only making like eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars or eight hundred something like that after coming off of a twenty-seven win season with the Seattle Kraken. Like, I'm very, su- I know his goals against average wasn't great, whatever, but like. I don't know, man. Like this guy looks like he's got a lot of game left to me. I'm very surprised that he didn't get another opportunity. Like he basically signed with the Leafs is like, you know, yeah, I'll play for the Marlies for a bit and wait for my opportunity. I'm yep. surprised another team in the league didn't just sign him as like fucking a backup. backup. Yeah. Like this this guy's got he can still play, clearly. Yeah. Like he's well, making the most out of this. That is for sure. I think you're seeing a lot of the teams in the NHL are starting to come around to the idea that you need three NHL goalies. It, it it's never been that way, and, and teams just sort of gamble on two. But now it's, I mean, look at around the league. How many guys, how many teams, sorry, would have been like, we'll take Martin Jones right now. Like well, with the, the injuries he, piling up and some of the teams playing whoever in net. He was on, you look at some of the goal, some of the teams that have had problems with goaltending this I'm season. And, and like Jones was on waivers right there to be had. And everyone was like, Pass, pass, pass. Because, because of a hundred thousand yeah. dollar bone cash bonus that he was owed the day, which after. is nothing in retro for. Teams. No, but it kept like, the fl- it kept the flies off. It's just it like, was a good how, move. How many teams today, though, Chad, are looking at this, being like, we should have grabbed that fucking guy? A lot. Yeah, there's a lot. Time. That's what Big I'm saying. Time. Like it, every year, it just seems teams are dipping into their farm system. You need a third goalie now. Martin Jones is the guy. He's been killing oh, it. Anyway, I'm not going to – we'll we'll just keep it at this tonight. I do – next podcast, uh, maybe because they're playing the Sharks again, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, I do want to get into the Atlantic Division, yep. possible first-round playoff matchups, and uh, just some scenarios that I'm kind of thinking about uh, the Leafs and potential opponents for the first round and, and all that. But we'll save that for Tuesday night. So, yeah, that's all I got for it tonight, Chad. Yeah, uh, so for the Tip and Maple Leafs podcast, once again, don't forget to follow us on social media at the Tip and Maple Leafs podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Hit like it, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Hit the bell so you get notified every time a video is posted. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok, Tip and Podcast, Twitter, Tip and Pod, email us, Tip and Podcast, and gmail.com. And if you can, on Spotify or Apple Music, leave a five star review for us because it really does help us out with the algorithm. And if you like this logo, let us know. <laughs> Let us know. Dale worked hard on that slogan. <laughs> yeah, big time. Anyway, for the Tip and Maple Leafs podcast, I'm Chad. I'm Dale. And we will. Hey, the Sharks are in town on Tuesday night. Will Mike Ricci be around with his reach dogs? Absolutely. Thanks for watching, guys. We Thanks got a for story for you. Yeah, well, do we have a story for you? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe on YouTube to the tip in Maple Leafs podcast. Go Leafs go. Let's keep this thing going, going for four wins in a row. When they return home to play the sharks on Tuesday night, we will catch you guys later.